Hey YouTube, I'm back with another little video. Okay, so I have a little bit of an interesting take on this scripture verse uh, that I keep honestly hearing everywhere <laughs> the past week or so. So I'm really starting to it started to get to me that I'm like, yeah, no, Lord, you're saying something about this verse. And as I've been praying about it and sitting with the Lord on it and just um, with some of the stuff the Lord has been showing me recently, I'm like, no, this makes so much sense, Jesus. And I really believe this is something that he wants us to be mindful of when we're thinking of the tickling of the ears um, concept that we read in the Bible. Because when we read this, oftentimes I think we think, um, you know, we're going to hear things in the end time or, you know, later days where um, people are just indulging in sin. And so whatever's encouraging you to indulge in sin, that's the tickling of the ears. And I agree that there's definitely that type of a doctrine out there. But in the church, I believe that there's something a lot more sneaky, a lot more seductive that is happening at this time. Um, and I think it's been happening for a while, but I've just, I've personally seen it in my own life and I've seen it in many believers lives that I personally know and that I see online. So first of all, I want to start before I get into this and read 2 Timothy 4 verse 3 to 4 and this is in the NIV and then I'm going to read it in the amplified version. So the NIV version says um for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So this is what the NIV version says. And then now I want to read what the Amplified version says. Because the Amplified version of the Bible will take, I believe it's the Greek and the Hebrew words, if they're there in the original text, and break down some meaning, modern meaning, um, with our dictionary, like the English dictionary, um, with what those Hebrew and, and Greek words meant. It kind of elaborates and puts in little like brackets. Um a further meaning uh, to the words that are there based off of the historical um, Greek or Hebrew that the passages were actually written in. So you can go look up. I think there's probably a better way to describe that. Hopefully that made sense. But anyways, this is the Amplified Version. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold. And will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. So there's a lot here. And I, I first just want to break this down and say I think that in our society and in our culture there's a lot of um uh what this says here like the errors we hold a lot of errors especially especially in how we see and and how we perceive things and how we're intaking information and how we're believing and perceiving a certain thing uh interpreting a certain thing interpreting <laughs> a certain thing um and our lenses are a little bit skewed at times with trauma, with false doctrines, with our own perspectives, with honestly just errors that aren't showing us the true reality, the truth that Jesus wants us to see, the truth of the gospel, and sometimes the truth of what scripture says, and sometimes the reality of our life, and the reality of who we are, and the reality of our identity, identity in Jesus, and the reality of who Jesus is as well, it can be tainted and distorted. And so I really want to just dive right into this. And in this world today, I think our tickle, a little tickle, what would tickle our ears, especially in the church, I'm talking about in the church, born again believers, I'm not necessarily talking about people that aren't saved, but I think that this could still apply. But just for those of you who are in the church, who are Christians, who are born again, your savior, Jesus followers, um, you want to hear condemnation, not praise or congratulations. 
This is something that would tickle your ear more is to hear condemnation. You need to do better. You're not doing this enough. You should do, you should fast more. You need to pray more. You need to serve them more. You're not doing enough. You don't read your Bible enough. You're not getting up at 5 a.m. What do you even think you're doing? You didn't even get that right. You're deceived. You're listening to a lying spirit. You're blah, 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 blah. That is tickling to your flesh and to your ears because in your life, in many of our lives across the globe, we have been subjected to these few things. Conditional love, judgment, self-criticism, rejection, especially from families or parental, and neglect. That has become familiar to us. And this might not be... um. Like, it might have not been super intentional. It might have not been, you know, like, uh, you know, this is just the way of the world. <laughs> the way of the world is to have conditional love, to judge, to self-criticize, to reject, and especially families and parents rejecting kids and vice versa, and then neglect of any kind. And this is something that is so familiar to us, even from childhood. Okay, so this is what your body and your mind and your heart is says, this is familiar. This is what I know. This is this is this is what truth is because it has to be condemning, criticizing, judgmental. It must kind of like hurt me a bit in order for it to be true. Uh, if I hear congratulations, I say it was Jesus, not me. When if you truly did something for Jesus, if you truly did something, you know, with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit, like you can take credit for that. You can say, yeah, thank you. I, I really try. I tried hard. I did my best with that. And I'm really grateful that Jesus gave me this gifting and that I got to do that. Like, that's so cool. You can take that compliment and you can let Jesus congratulate you. You can let other people congratulate you. Like you can be congratulated. You don't need to just be condemned. And I think that there's a certain sector of people um, in the church that would rather hear condemnation. And to the point where if the Holy Spirit has a word for them, that is like a very positive word or they read something in scripture that is a very good thing, they can't even interpret it. They can't even interpret God's goodness towards them. They can't even interpret the unconditional love of their heavenly father. They can't even interpret it. So if someone comes with that word or comes with the heart of the father, they're like, that is not familiar to me. That is very unknown. And I'm going to push that away and call that false. And ultimately that doesn't tickle my ears, but it's of the Lord but it's of God's heart. It's loving. It's encouraging. It's strengthening. It's comforting. That's from his heart. That's prophecy. That's words. That's from his heart. That's messages that are from his heart. That's what the Bible, you know, is all about. There is conviction. There is correcting, of course, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. There's zero. Zip, zip, zero. And this is something that, oh man, it, it's just been hitting me because I'm like, this is a big part of the church. Very like, um, condemning. I think a lot of people don't know truly who they are. They don't have a good identity. I know for years, I didn't even know who I was. People were just telling me, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow Jesus. Don't even worry about yourself. Just be like Jesus. And I'm like, I'll put Jesus first, but I have my own personality. I have like my own needs. I have my own things I'm going to do or not do. Like I'm my own person. I'm a follower of Jesus, but I'm not Jesus. You know, and so I had to come to this term myself of who I truly am in Jesus. Who who is Ezra Lee? Who who is she first as a daughter of Jesus, but then also who who am I as like gifts, talents, and abilities that God has given to me that I can externally use to contribute to this world? Like those are two separate things. And I think a lot of times in the church, we're not encouraged to find out who we are, and so then we just hate it, like denying ourselves is like, I'm going to hate myself. And you don't even realize you're doing this because it's so subconscious, but you actually don't like yourself. And so if you don't like yourself and you don't love yourself like God loves you, then you hate yourself. And if you hate yourself, you are going to be walking in conditional love. You're only going to be able to receive conditional love as well as give conditional love. You're only going to be able to receive and give judgment only. And you're only going to be able to do self-criticism and you're going to try to self-criticize other people as well. And you're always going to, you know, feel rejected and try to reject other people because of what you've been feeling because of what is familiar to you and you're also going to neglect yourself and sometimes neglect other people and ultimately all these things are going to be 
really hurt in your walk with the Lord. Instead, what Jesus wants us, his followers, his people to, to live in is un his unconditional love, grace, self-compassion, the acceptance of our heavenly father. So no matter who rejects us, no matter who comes against us, no matter who isn't for us, he is for his kiddos and we live from that acceptance. And then we live from his nurture. All of these things, by the way, are what we um, as followers of Jesus grow and cultivate inside of who we are as we grow closer to the Holy Spirit and, you know, read the Bible and grow closer to Abba, our Heavenly Father. So these are going to grow over time. But at first, they're very unknown. Very, 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 very unknown. And so you might push that away and, and your ears might be tickling Woo, wanting to hear some condemnation. You need to do better. Why aren't you doing this? You should have done this yesterday. Honestly, why don't you just, you, what are you even doing? And then you're falling into what I like to call, and I think so many other people call it religious OCD. You're falling into this pattern of, I need to do more. I need to be more. I'm not doing enough. And you're calling any words that um, someone brings to you. It's like, I think you need to do a fast. You ultimately think, oh yeah, of course, I'm not doing enough. I need to deny myself, deny myself. And you're going into this extremism and that's tickling your ears. And the Holy Spirit's like, I just wanted you to live your life following me. And you'll know if you need to fast. You'll know if you need to pray. You'll know if you just want to worship me. You'll know, you'll know, you'll know where I want you to read. You'll know when I want you to get up in each season because each season's not the same. You're not going to have the same bedtime and the same morning um wake up schedule in every single season because your life is going to change so you have to be adaptable and flexible with the holy spirit which is very hard especially for certain personalities and so this is when i read this i, I i'm still like i know that this passage second timothy 4 verse 3 to 4 it, it can definitely be talking about people who are saying false doctrines and pointing people to the wrong jesus and ultimately pointing people to self-indulgence and and to just deny everything what the bible says and just do what you want you know that is definitely a concept here but i think that's kind of like a well-known concept but have you ever thought of this have you just sat and considered wait what am i listening to is it is it condemning judgmental conditional love self-criticizing reject promoting rejection um promoting neglect like what am i listening to what are the voices that i'm listening to what is the mentalities that i'm constantly going around with and also like when do you know that jesus is about unconditional love grace self-compassion acceptance and nurturing do you know that that's who he is and chiefly those should be the types of words and feelings that you feel when you are alone with the holy spirit and when you're around people who have the holy spirit and who are walking with the holy spirit because if you only i'm not just saying once in a while feel like um um like the bro the body of jesus um I, I think it literally even says up here This is to Timothy, so I'm not going to make that statement because I just, I don't want to jump that conclusion. But anyways, it, even if there's some things where you're with believers and there is some like helpful edifying, you know, correction that comes your way. Like if you're like, hey, like what is the Lord putting on your heart? And then there's some correction, there's some conviction that is, that is from the Lord at times. But when you're only, only ever they're only ever criticizing you. There's like, there's no encouragement. It's just like criticizing. You feel awful. You feel like always looked and judged and you always feel like rejected around these people. And you're like, wait, what's going on? Either you've got some stuff on the inside that you're, there's some mentalities or some perspectives that might be a good idea for you to process through in safe spaces with the Holy Spirit, maybe with therapists and things like that. Or, or it's, it's the people that are around are on the outside of you that aren't really fostering this heart of Abba that they're not growing closer to the Lord because they don't know maybe how to they want to but they've had their own past of honestly the nature of God being very foreign to them the unconditional love of Abba the Heavenly Father being very foreign to them so they're they're just trying to follow the Lord but missing the love aspect which is literally the most important thing that scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 13 and so when you're when you're thinking about this and you're, you're looking at your life, you're looking at people around you, you're looking at your mainly first, first, 
first in this video. Look at your own life, your own thought life, your own heart life. What is going on on the inside of you? First, look at yourself and examine before you're like, oh, this person, that's definitely what they're going through. Just hold on. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what are you wanting to hear condemnation all the time correction rebuke warning are you programmed by anxiety instead of peace what are you what is your ears wanting to hear what would feel more comforting to you a warning versus um a pleased word from your heavenly father saying he's proud of you how hard is it to hear that sometimes right and so when i looked up this word the word pleasing means satisfying or appealing. Myth is a widely held but false belief or idea. Misconception, a view or opinion that is incorrect based on a faulty on faulty thinking or understanding. And this is what a lot of us have in our minds. And we have to go to the Lord to have him renew our minds because we're believing myths and misconceptions of who Jesus is, who the great I am is, and who we're actually called to be. And so then if we have those myths and uh, misconceptions and errors that we believe, then sometimes we'll listen to teachers and to people that satisfy our own desires to support the errors that we hold in our minds and in our hearts. They can be well-meaning people, just like you might be a well-meaning person, but these are the realities that if we have misconceptions, lies, or myths in our minds about who Jesus is, but who we are, that'll trickle into how we view other people as well. And so I want to encourage you through all of this to really ask the Lord, what myths and misconceptions am I believing or, or am I believing, sorry, or thinking, pondering about who you are? Bring me to the truth. Holy Spirit, lead me into all truth. I don't want my ears to be tickled by things that are not honoring to you. Even, even when I just want to hear condemnation and it makes me feel good when someone says you need to do better because you chronically feel like you're not doing enough all the time. So that feels good to you. Even though Jesus is like, you're doing great. Like, I, that's not for me. I didn't send that person. I did not speak. I did not send them. Because you will know when the Holy Spirit sends somebody to you. Even if you reject them for a second or for a season, the Holy Spirit will always bring her back, bring you back around and say, no, 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 I, I sent them. He will always confirm. But if you don't want to hear those words, I mean, sometimes you might never um, want to even check in with the Lord, you know, about what <laughs> what words were spoken. But if you really do want to check in with the Lord, be like, Lord, what what words were actually spoken? What were you trying to tell me that I pushed away because I had a misconception or a myth about who you are and how you work and who your what your heart truly is for me and for those who are saved, those who are born again? Like, what is this misconception that I've been believing? Because when unconditional love, grace, self-compassion, acceptance from your heavenly father and nurture are foreign to you or unknown, how how is that that that's going to feel like i want to reject that you're not going to feel comfortable with that but that is who your heavenly father is that is who he is that is his nature that that's his heart and so what becomes more familiar which familiar means well known from long or close association so if something's familiar to you you've been around it for a while it's become a pattern it's become very familiar to you like especially when we're talking about mental processes or you know beliefs or biases that we do have that's been uh, with you for a while, probably more than you realize some of these myths and misconceptions. And so some of those myths and misconceptions that are familiar to us actually um, feel more like conditional love, judgment, self-criticism, rejection, and neglect. And so that's what feels more familiar. So when the Holy Spirit comes with the opposite, we're like, hey, that's not, I've never that's foreign. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I don't want that. But then when someone comes with a like word that's like, you need to do more. And quite frankly, you're not doing enough. And then once you do enough, then God will receive you as your as his son or daughter. You're like, yeah, I'm going to receive that. I'm going to try to work my way. And that that feels so good to your flesh because you're like, I knew it. I knew it this whole time. When in reality, the Holy Spirit's like, no, 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 no. You receive Jesus. You do what Romans 10 verse 9 to 10 clearly states. And you are saved by Jesus, not by your own works. It wasn't by your own works. It never has been for your salvation, for your sanctification is through the power of the Holy Spirit. You choose to be willing, but it's all on the Lord and what on his power and, and on his strength. And it's like he is so, so beautiful. But we want to hear condemnation. 
not praise or congratulations. Like, think about this. The last time you obeyed the Lord or you did something really awesome, imagine the Holy Spirit being like, you did an amazing job. I'm so proud of you. Like, seriously, congratulations. Like, I'm actually so happy for you. Would you be able to sit in that moment and just take that in, his pleasure, his his joy with what you chose to do, his um, pr- the pride of your father, your heavenly father? Would you be able to sit there, honestly think, and just receive that before thinking, okay, what else can I do? Or, well, it wasn't the greatest because honestly, I could have done better. Could you just receive the pride of your heavenly father? And honestly, if you say no, that's okay. I'm proud of you for admitting it. I am just now, after 26 years of being in the church my whole life, and honestly being saved when I was a little kid, you know, learning and growing, always, I've been in the Bible, I've read the Bible a lot, I have memorized so many scriptures as a little kid, like I have grown up in the church, and I am just now this year starting to be able to accept the pride of my Heavenly Father, as well as the nurture and the unconditional love of my Heavenly Father. Like, I am just now getting to that point where I'm like, no, I I can receive that. Thank you, Jesus. I really appreciate that. Like, it still at times can be challenging for me, so you're not alone. You are not alone, but that's the reality. Think about it. Be honest with yourself. I don't want you to fake it till you make it. I always hated that phrase, side note. When people are like, just fake it till you make it. I'm like, or you could just be honest. <laughs> I just, I, I honestly, whenever people would say that, I have such a burden for the truth that I'm just like, we could just be honest too. Like we could just like, we, if you don't have it, you don't have it. And like our society is just like, fake it till you make it. Put on a show until you know what you're doing. And I've just internally always been like, Wait, why can't we just like be honest? But anyways, the world doesn't take to honesty sometimes very well. Um, because it's foreign at times, like the true honesty of God's heart and of someone who like really cares to be honest when it's warranted is not, um, it's just like not common. We like to We like to avoid the truth. I know there's been seasons of my life where Actually, not even just seasons. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Last night, the Holy Spirit spoke to me something. And all day today and last night, I knew what he said. And I'm receiving what he said. But I, my flesh does not like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> and it goes against goes against my flesh and my nature big time. Um, and that's how I know it's the Holy Spirit like speaking to me. There's a lot of peace there. And I see his wisdom. But there's been many times where like, I don't want to, sometimes what he tells me, I'm like, you know, you, you feel uncomfortable with it. You're like, wait a minute. Oh, hold up. Like, I don't know if I, you know, you know what he's saying, but you're like, hold up. That was a little uncomfy. That was a little, I don't know if I want to believe that Lord. And you know, he just keeps speaking and he's so gracious. So I don't even know where I was going with that. I don't even know but I guess even last night for me like there's things that are still hard for me to receive from the Lord when he speaks stuff to me because I'm like Lord but I see it this way and you're telling me this and that doesn't make sense to me and then the Holy Spirit's like I know I know all things like just trust me I've never failed you and I have to really trust him especially with certain topics and certain situations in my life I really just have to trust the Lord and he's so faithful but there's sometimes where my flesh really is just like uh um Lord like I don't know if that's you know if we should I, that my flesh is like no so if you still have moments like that I don't even know where I was going with that but if you still have moments like that I do too but I'm still submitted to Jesus and I was like Lord I received what you said. It's just hard for me to hear, but I know that you're speaking it to me and I feel your heart and I see your wisdom. So I will let go and I'll just surrender one day at a time and you'll just keep leading me and I trust you. So that's what we have to get to in the point where we can really truly say that from our hearts and our lips, not just our lips, because he can, he can see our hearts when we're like, I trust you. And God's like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) like, I think I've told you guys recently, um, I think this was a few weeks ago now, a week and a half ago or something. I was like, God, you know, I just trust you, but like, I don't really trust blah, blah, blah. And before I could even say the blah, blah, blah part, the Lord's like, you trust me? Hmm, That's a funny story. (laughs) Like just, you didn't say it that sassy. Like I'm being, I'm that, but it was in that essence of like, oh, you want to come back to that? Because no, you don't. That's, that's actually where you're, you don't trust me right now. I was like, 
oh shoot <laughs> true and then when he like exposed my heart I was like yeah that's fact and so you know he's so faithful and it was so kind and it was so loving the way he said it not like the sassy way I said it that was not but you're just like oh really god like I don't I, I do trust you what but he knows the true he knows our heart. He knows the true desires of our heart. He knows the true conditions of our heart. Even the good conditions, like the the things in our heart, not just like, oh yeah, like me. Oh, you don't trust me. Okay. Me and the Lord have been working on that. And so that's not all he shows me about my heart. There's so many times where he's like, I just love this about you. Like, I love your heart so beautiful. Your heart is so this or you're just that or you're that and he speaks these things to me and he calls out the good in my heart too he sees the amazing qualities that are in my heart and he sees the amazing qualities that are in your heart too jesus's people the things he wants to cultivate in you the characteristics that you have that if you're following the holy spirit and being sanctified by him that there's such a beauty to your character that he wants to cultivate in you and really make you um more and more like him but still yourself he is he's not gonna make you jesus jesus is jesus <laughs> But you're going to be, you're made already in his image, but you're going to be more refined with the character and the heart that is aligned with the heavenly, our heavenly father. So, you know, your own unique fingerprint of the father's heart on this earth. That's, that's what, that's what you are. You little, you little unique little finger, you little fingerprint. Um, but yeah, I just go read second Timothy four, verse three to four and process that in your own time. Maybe the Lord will speak other things to you. Maybe he will expound on this or um yeah just speak to you more but I, I really think we need to watch out for this because when I see on social media all these things it's always like uh all these videos it's like oh you need to do better or here's my morning routine with the lord and here's this and here's that and five steps till this and you could do better too and I'm doing a fast and they're doing a fast and and, you know, I'm doing like reading the Bible and this and I'm, I'm doing, doing, doing. And I'm just like, I'm tired listening to you guys. <laughs> are you okay? Like, I'm not saying routines are bad. I love a good routine. But, you know, it, it just comes down to that point of why are you doing what you're doing? And does the Lord really want you to do it? And if you're feeling burnt out and exhausted, what, what schedule, is there a schedule change? Or is this just a season for you? Like, do you need to change some stuff with your schedule? And just be in a place more of accepting what Jesus is saying over you and like accepting mainly what he did on the cross for you instead of trying to work for it subconsciously and trying to work for uh, like unconditional love means you don't work for it so you don't need to work for his love sweetheart you don't need to work for it um unconditional love grace uh I don't know if you can fathom what grace is because it's unfathomable like it's unmerited uh it's not even it's like you do something bad and let's say you stole something and technically you should have gone to jail for that. The Lord's like, no, you don't have to go to jail because I paid the price. Like you, you literally, what was supposed to happen to you doesn't. Um, and so sometimes there's things where you're just, there's just this grace of the Lord that, that he gives to you. And, and I mean, sometimes if you continually make mistakes or just there's cause and effect still on this earth I don't want you to think that like the grace of the Lord will mean every time you make a mistake or mess up or really do something crazy that there's not going to be you know some cause and effect to your actions because there will be at times like he still wants you to learn from your mistakes and you know he's a good loving father but I just wanted to put that out there because I don't want people to be like yeah it's really said that I can just do whatever I want and God will just make sure that nothing happens no that that's not what I meant um but that that's definitely, uh, you know, he wants you to ha know that you have unconditional love in him, grace, and that you can be compassionate on yourself. You don't need to be hard on yourself like other people were hard on you or or like the enemy's been hard on you or you've seen videos and influencers that are just like brutally hard trying to tell you to do all these things. And you're like, I'm trying. And like every day they're telling you to do a new thing. Here's a new trend. You should buy this. You should... Yeah, listen, you don't need to buy that new product. Just be faithful with the products you have and trust the Lord to bring you the new products. For those of you who are like, I need that new product. I need to get this. Like, just he'll show you what to buy and what not to buy if you commit all your all your ways to the Lord. Um, but having self-compassion when you mess up. Okay, I'm a human. Now I'm going to work at what do I need to do to resolve this mistake and take accountability where needed. Like, you know, that's just really cool. And then acceptance. Um, you are accepted by Jesus. You don't need to work for that. 
you just are when you're a son or daughter of Jesus. Like you're accepted by him. He accepts you. He approves of you. The stamp of approval is on your life, not because of your actions, but because of your heart choice to be submitted to the Lord and to let the Holy Spirit do a work in you and to be saved. Like that you're accepted. You're approved of. The stamp of approval is on you because of the cross, because of the blood of Jesus. So amen. You don't even need to work for that at all. And he wants to nurture you whenever you're going through some tough things. He's not just like, honestly, you should have just gotten over it. And you should have done this better. And honestly, if you just did this, you would have prevented that. No, he's like, come here, like rest in my presence. Just be still and let me comfort you. He may not say a single thing, but his presence is comforting enough. And that is who Jesus is. That's his heart for you. That's the heart of Abba, your heavenly father. And that is hard to hear. That is not tickling to the ear. Unconditional love, grace, self-compassion, acceptance, or nurture is not tickling to the ear when you've not known it. That is very foreign and can be very scary, especially if you're in survival mode, especially if you're, you know, used to human beings not being that way towards you. That is not an easy feat to feel, to accept, and to truly receive. If anything, you'd rather hear the conditional love, judgment, and self-criticism, rejection, and what was the last one? Neglect. You'd rather have stuff like that because it's at least familiar to you, but it's not Jesus's heart for you. So I hope this video kind of brought some clarity. I I'm, I love this. I just know that this is going to help so many of you. And you're going to recognize the people that you're listening to that are really operating not out of the love of like um, Abba, their Heavenly Father, but they're operating out of this works mindset that is just, they might be really loving Jesus and they're not an awful person, but it might be harmful for you to listen to some of their stuff because it's not promoting um it's itching your ears, but it's itching your ears in not the right way. You're, you're working yourself dry. And then for others, it's going to show you the inside of truly like what's going on inside of you that you can truly go to Jesus and be like, I don't trust you or God, I don't really know how to be nurtured. I'm not, not really sure what unconditional love is or quite frankly, I don't really know how to have self-compassion on myself. Like, what does that even look like? And you're going to be able to be honest with the Lord. That's why David in the Bible was so... um. That, that was why his heart was after the Lord's because he was just honest with the Lord. You know, he was definitely not perfect, but he was honest. He was just willing and honest. Like, this is where I'm at. Like, this is how I'm feeling. He wasn't like out here like, no, I'm not feeling like that and secretly feeling something else on the inside. He's just like, no, this is how it is. This is how I feel. Like, this is what's going on, God. And I don't really understand. Or like, God, I just love you. You're so amazing. You're, you're worthy to be praised. Or like, I'm but a worm. Like, he was just so honest with, with the Lord. And so please be honest with the Lord. And even if you don't know the honest reflections of your heart, because they've just been so hidden for a while, ask the Lord to reveal that to you. He knows them. He can translate your heart, even though you might not be able to. Okay? So bless you guys in all the ways. I really pray that this... um refreshed you and I just pray a blessing over you and thank you so so much for listening um I'm gonna pray for you I was just trying to decide if I wanted to pray for you I'm gonna pray for you um <clears throat> oh Jesus I worship you and Abba I thank you for who you are I thank you for your love I, I thank you for just the realities of who you are, Lord. And as someone who's grown up in the church and, and I just have been learning this really this year, the realities of your heart, Heavenly Father, it's just, it's, you're so stunning and I, I worship you and I, I just am so grateful um, and overjoyed to have um, the realities of your heart in my life and I pray that the realities of your heart would be in these uh, individuals lives as well Lord I pray that even in this video that people would feel your heart Lord because yes faith you know is knowing what you know you've said what the Bible says and standing on that but sometimes we just need to feel you God sometimes we just need to feel your presence sometimes we just need to feel your love what is unconditional love what is grace what is self-compassion what is nurture what is acceptance what does that feel like and I pray Jesus that you would ultimately show that to me and my, these lovely individuals these lovely human beings that you would show them as well what that would look like in their life and in their internal being with you 
um, as well as externally, that you would bring people around all of us, they would show the compassion, the nurture, the love, um, con unconditional love, the grace and acceptance and nurture of your heart, Lord. And I pray, Jesus, that you would minister to people and show them who is not healthy for them personally to listen to, what content they shouldn't be consuming that would actually pull them away from your heart for them, and what content they should be listening to, what, what promotes your heart, what promotes healthy um, connection to you. And I pray, Jesus, that if they're striving or people that have religious OCD that think, oh my goodness, I have to do all these things, and if I don't do these things, God's going to hate me, or if I don't do this... I'm not a good follower of Jesus. I pray, Jesus, you would just break that that yoke over them in Jesus' name and that they would today start to renew their mind and say, no, 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 I, I don't need to do X, Y, and Z to please Jesus um, in, in this re religious routine. I, I just need to be his daughter. I just need to be his son, to be saved by Jesus and to walk in um, this uh, harmony, but also unity um, with the Holy Spirit. Not that we are God, I'm not saying that. But just like one with, with you, Lord. We're not you. We're never, I don't believe in the little God's theology. Eh, nope. But I do know that you want us to walk in step with the spirit, um, following the teachings of Jesus and, and, and the cross, and then really leaning into your heart, Father. So I, I pray that we would walk in step with you. And yeah, you would just show us your heart. And I pray... Yeah, you would reveal the lies in my heart, in their heart, the misconceptions in my heart and in their heart, um, and these myths that we might be believing that aren't in line with your heart. If there's anything that's not of you that is displeasing to you, that is leading us into toxic patterns, into toxic routes, into to away from your heart, I pray, Jesus, you would shine a light right now and expose that in me, but also expose it in them too, Lord, that, that we would see clearly what you see in our hearts, even the good things. Even right now, Lord, not just like, oh, they need to improve, but God, I pray you'd even just save the improvement chat for another time. And I pray, Lord, that you would reveal in me and in these individuals the good thing, at least one or a few multiple things about their heart, about their character, about their personal unique nature that is just so pleasing to you, that you love, that it is one of your favorite things about them. And I just pray, Lord, that you would point that out and shine that out to them, not just yeah, you need to be doing this better. Or, yeah, you could grow in this area. No, forget that. That's another time that that will that conversation will happen. But, but for now, I pray that they be encouraged and infused with hope, with love. They be strengthened and they be refreshed, and and that they would know who you've called them to be, and and rejoice in that, and um, not lower themselves for the sake of um, the familiar toxicity of their past and trying to. Um, conform to that but they would let you renew their mind and that the familiar for them and for me would be um, unconditional love grace self-compassion um, acceptance and nurture that that would become actually familiar as we follow you lord bring the right people around these lovely individuals and me as well in our journeys through each step of the way and um I praise you. I worship you. Thank you, Father, for listening and for um, being attentive to all of our hearts. You're so beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to do like, I just thought of the, what am I thinking of? You know, the Pink Panther scene. <laughs> I think is it one or two the newer movies not like the older episodes or shows or whatever but the newer movies with Steve Martin where he's like that Mexican looking guy at the restaurant he goes undercover and he's like I I I I and he's like stopping on the table trying to get a bug off the table like a spy listening audio bug off the table and he's anyway I just thought of like I I I <laughs> it's a great scene anyways um yeah, that is all I have for you guys. I pray that you're encouraged. You have a great rest of your day and I'll be back whenever I am back.